Ever describes the chaos as first responders enlist her help the day of the Uvalde tragedy. We need these kids to help. We need medical attention. We will hear from her this noon. And a suspect who already went through a murder trial once is back in court again for jury selection. Why he's on retrial years later. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Homicide detectives have started their Monday with a lot of questions, including who stabbed a woman to death and why. San Antonio police found a wounded woman in the street outside an apartment complex on Jackson Keller Road near West Avenue. And as Katrina Weber tells us, witnesses believe it started with a fight. There was no missing the sights and sounds outside the Hamilton Place apartments. That includes both before and after San Antonio police arrived in the 1600 block of Jackson Keller. The commotion had neighbors out of bed around 1.30 this morning. And next thing you know, all of a sudden they just start fighting. And you can hear those hits like really fast, really, really, really bad. This neighbor who wanted to hide her identity says she saw two other women throwing punches outside her home. Then almost as soon as the trouble began, she thought it was over with one of them driving off. I go away for two minutes and then I come back outside. She's on the ground and they trying to resuscitate her. Someone else had called police at first for the fight, then to say a woman had been stabbed. Officers found the victim on the ground with a wound in her neck, but no one could save her. The 35-year-old died. According to police, the victim did not live here. They believe she was visiting a friend here at the time. A neighbor says she has seen this woman here before and recognizes her as a friendly face. I mean, she's very sweet. She's a very sweet woman. It seems someone, though, did not feel the same way and took it to a deadly level. Early on, police say they had conflicting information about the killer. Some people told them the stabber was a woman, but investigators now believe a man was involved. They're still working to sort it all out. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It might have been a really soggy weekend for a lot of folks, but look at this beautiful Monday out there. Yeah, it is nice right now. Yesterday, uh, honestly, if you like rain, it was pretty nice. Just some light rain most of the day. It did add up to about a tenth of an inch or maybe a little bit more uh, in spots. Now we're going to dry out. We've got a couple dry days here. We're going to watch for some small rain chances ahead. The rain over the weekend, it did kick up molds. Look at this number, 17,400 in very high category. That is headache level. Mr. David Sears will tell you that. Uh, not, not fun to see that, but that's what happens when we get uh, sort of those light rain days. Uh, hopefully those numbers will start to come down. Here's a look at some of the weather headlines. Climbing temperatures will be near 90 way later this week. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to watch what goes on across North Texas because that will have a bearing on what happens here. If some storms gather up there, the flow may bring some of those storms a little closer to us. We'll explain that here in a few minutes. And we're also going to have a look at the rainfall update. 2022 is looking so much, or 2023 I should say, looking so much better than 2022. We'll have those numbers. 78 right now. Dew point is at 62. We've got light winds. Forecast for today, 83 at 3 o'clock. 85s are high. And then down into the 70s tonight by 9, 10 o'clock with light southeasterly winds. Guys. Thank you, Justin. New this noon, we are getting our first look at a man on trial for murder since his first trial back in 2019. That's because cameras haven't been allowed in the courtroom. That first trial ended with a hung jury and prosecutors are trying again. Mark Howerton is in court today as jury selection begins for his retrial. He's accused of killing Kaylee Mendati back in 2017. She was a student at Trinity University and a member of the cheerleading squad. Howerton was originally on trial for her murder back in 2019, but that ended in a mistrial after the jury couldn't agree on a verdict. Howerton is found guilty. He faces up to life in prison. A case of road rage leading to a potential murder charge and a woman dead. It happened around 930 last night near Loop 410 near Calabra Road on the northwest side. Police found a 26 year old woman lying on the ground near the gas pumps at a gas station with gunshot wounds nearby. Police also found another woman in her car who claimed she'd been crashed into while on the road. She told police she followed that car to get the license plate number, but after stopping at the gas station, she says the victim started to assault her. That's when she says she shot the woman from her car. The woman died at the hospital. That suspect arrested and now facing a murder charge. 
Police still don't have a lot to go on as they investigate a shooting on the north side. It happened just after 3.30 on Hildebrand near Blanco. We're told a SAPD officer found the 58-year-old man who had stumbled into the street. Investigators tell us the man had been shot twice, was uncooperative. So far, they don't have a suspect. City leaders in Uvalde today making it clear this week is about reflection and healing. Today, the Uvalde mayor hoping the community can come forward and move forward after the Robb Elementary shooting. We can't even imagine the pain that they felt. In a year's time, they still don't have answers to simple questions that they should have gotten. I mean, I'm the mayor. I've been one year. I haven't got one briefing from anybody from day one. Not one. Nowhere's the county judge. That's very frustrating. So if it's frustrating on us, you can only imagine what it does to them. So, I mean, hopefully that what people will see that we will move forward. We're never going to get over this day and the families are never going to get over this day. But together, maybe we can move forward and, and we can we can come out of this and show that, that out of this bad and terrible thing that we can have positive things come forward and, and, and show love to one another to move forward and get the answers that we need. The mayor saying the city supports the families and the ways they choose to grieve. And he's asking anyone who's thinking about coming to Uvalde to pay their respects to please give the families some space. In just a couple of days, it will be the one year since that deadly shooting in Uvalde. We've been speaking to families and survivors. That includes a Uvalde CISD school bus driver. She describes how she ended up helping transport victims the day of that shooting. I'm sitting in my bus and I just see these, these military people or the war tag because they were in camo. They have kid one, they have kids, they're carrying kids. And so they just dart to my bus and I open the door. And they look like they were very, very badly injured. No, we need, these kids need help. We need medical attention. And parents are trying to get inside your bus. And they were banging and I was like, oh my God. I told them I have to go lock the door. Incredible stories coming up tonight on Wednesday. We have live coverage from Uvalde throughout the day on May 24th to remember the victims and the survivors of the tragedy. At 9 o'clock, we'll be airing our KSAT 12 News special, One Year In, Uvalde. Washington, D.C. Now, this new lawmakers on Capitol Hill are still going back and forth over the nation's debt. And there is a face to face with the president and House Majority Leader. As the two sides haggle over the details, the country waits and hopes to avoid economic catastrophe. ABC's he's Ikejachi with where negotiations stand and why President Biden remains optimistic about reaching a deal. With a likely economic crisis looming, President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy meeting face to face today to continue negotiations on how to raise the federal government's debt ceiling before the country defaults on its bills in a few days. Representatives from both sides meeting for over two hours over the weekend. The president expressing optimism after a phone call with the speaker as he returned from Japan. McCarthy also calling it productive, but stressing no deal has been reached. I think we, we can solve some of these problems if he understands what we're looking at. Republicans say they won't raise the debt ceiling until the president and Democrats agree to deep spending cuts, reclaiming unspent COVID funds, imposing stricter work requirements for certain federal aid programs like food stamps and immigration provisions, as well as an increase in military spending. The speaker has been very clear a red line is spending less money. After initially refusing to negotiate on raising the debt ceiling, sources say the White House made an offer that would limit military and domestic spending, affecting programs regarding education, housing, and scientific research. Biden also says he wants to raise taxes on large businesses and wealthy Americans, but Republicans have so far rejected those proposals. It's time for Republicans to accept that there is no bipartisan deal to be made solely, solely on their partisan terms. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen making clear the U.S. will run out of money to pay its bills by June 1st. I think that that's a, a, a hard right. deadline. If the nation defaults on its debt, 66 million Americans who rely on Social Security could have their checks delayed at the start of the month. And that goes for all government workers, too. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Still coming up, the Denver Nuggets are just one win away from making history. 
Here's your chance to get up close and personal with dinosaurs. We're going to take a look at a local museum featuring the T-Rex in its latest exhibit. It's a summer of blockbuster dinosaur exhibits at the Witty Museum. The latest one to open this week featuring one of the fiercest predators of all time. Tiffany Huertas comes face to face with the iconic T-Rex and meets the family. They're the most recognizable dinosaurs in the world. Enormous, barely fit in the gallery. T-Rex was one of the fiercest predators of all time. We're the first in Texas to bring it here. Visitors at the Witty Museum can get up close and personal with Scotty, one of the world's most complete T-Rex skeletons that was discovered in Canada. It's part of the latest traveling exhibition, Tyrannosaurs Meet the Family. Beth Streaker, the chief creative officer at the Witty Museum, says the exhibit was created by the Australian Museum and is filled with rare fossil specimens and incredible models of feathered dinosaurs. And of course we're meeting the rest of his family, the whole, all the tyrannosaurs. So we've got um, skeletons um, representing species from China, um, other parts of North America, Canada. The exhibit shows the different members of the tyrannosaur family and they are so unique. From a lithronax that measures just about 26 feet long to a dilong that that can grow up to six feet long. Die long here, this specimen um, is really important for scientists because it is one of the first um, tyrannosaur specimens to show evidence of feathers. So were dinosaurs feathered or not, Die long holds those first clues. Visitors can also play interactive games and explore fossils of other giant dinosaurs found in Texas. We've added our own gallery uh, to this exhibition. So Lake Cretaceous fossils in Texas are, are rare, but we got our hands on some and we're, we're sharing them with everybody. The exhibit opens Wednesday and be prepared to look up. These tyrannosaurs are enormous. Tiffany Huertas, KSET 12 News. Pretty scary. Oh, the kids love that stuff. Love it. Yeah. I love this too. Yeah, this is uh, this is great um, weather if you've been putting off doing your lawn because of all the rain we've had. That's true. This is going to be a good week to get out and mow the lawn. I think you're going to have several days to choose from here, and the grass is growing nice and thick right now uh, with these recent rains. The aquifer is up again today, up two tenths of a foot to 648. This is the highest number we've seen in a long time with regards to the aquifer. So we're doing better, still below average, but doing better. And we showed you this earlier, mold 17,400, very high. One of the highest numbers we've seen mold wise uh, this season. We're going to talk more about the forecast. There are some small rain chances mixed in. We'll show it to you coming up. It is a 20,000 mile national relay to honor and remember our fallen military and first responders. Today, Carry the Load is going to be in New Braunfels, but it did make a stop in San Antonio over the weekend. Since 2011, Carry the Load has been trying to help people remember the true meaning of Memorial Day. This it's so amazing to get to see so many people come out and walk with us. Um, for people from all over the communities, all over the nation, are coming out and walking with us to remember their loved ones, and it's been a very special. We've gotten a good response this year. Just in time for Memorial Day weekend this year, Carry the Load has five routes covering 48 states. Interesting ride to work this morning. It was like I was in uh, Northern California on the coast. It was all foggy. But the really? fog, yeah, it was like really something. You couldn't even see downtown from when I He lives way out in the country. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was foggy in spots. Uh, yeah, you know, the rain yesterday gets there, it gets all the moisture in the soil, and then in the mornings you can get some of that patchy fog. We definitely saw that. Uh, the fog's gone, sun is out, but we do want to talk about the rainfall because the numbers, they've been good. Let's take a look at 2023. Through May 21st, we've got 11.31 inches. That is, yeah, so a little bit below average, but not bad considering where we've been. Let me take you back to 2022. The entire year of 2022, 2022, we all get up to 11.51 inches. It was the second driest year on record, remember that? So we are just two tenths away from reaching our entire total from last year. Uh, it gives you some perspective on where we're going. It's still not perfect, and we're probably still headed into a pretty dry summer, but it's much better, much better. And if we look at the rain chances over the next few days, yeah, they're not great. Uh, we have added in some Tuesday night, Wednesday, Wednesday night, and Thursday. 
uh, but it's a little complicated. And I'll show you that here in just a second. First, though, let's go outside for you. 78 degrees. We've got a few clouds and dew point is at 62. So that number is elevated, but not as high as it could be uh, with very light winds. So it's not a bad day out there. In the case of that 12 hour forecast, 83 by 3 o'clock, we'll top out around 85, 84, 6 o'clock, 83, 7 p.m. and 8, uh, 8 p.m. We're down to 81 then down into the 70s tonight. Look for a few clouds uh, maybe tomorrow morning. Uh, any sort of morning cloudiness that we had has uh, pretty much gone away. We can still see some clouds out around Rock Springs and Del Rio. Otherwise, everyone is either dealing with mostly sunny skies or partly cloudy skies. Looks like we're getting some fair weather cumulus clouds building up and down I-35. And as we look at the bigger picture, uh, you'll notice we've got some showers up across parts of Oklahoma, a little area of low pressure there. But over the next couple of days, what we're going to be watching is what happens up here, Texas Panhandle and into parts of North Texas. Why is that? Well, the flow in the upper levels is actually coming out of the north and west. And when we get this sort of setup, a lot of times we can get storms that build in the Texas Panhandle, come together in a cluster, and then work south and east can actually hold together and can, and can bring us rain from time to time. It's not a guaranteed thing, uh, but it can happen. And so as we look at the forecast here, this is just one computer model, but by midnight, it does show some storms that have developed in the Panhandle working their way towards central Texas, essentially missing us to the north. But as we get into tomorrow, maybe a little more promise that some of these storms could build a bit further south. And this is midnight Wednesday showing a few storms getting closer to us. And then we may do this again Wednesday into Thursday with some storms building to our north and working south and east. Again, not a guarantee, and it's going to be sort of a day to day forecast. It depends on where these storms develop up here, when they develop, what kind of outflow boundaries they put out. So that's just something we'll be watching. But, but there is an opportunity there uh, to get some uh, those showers and storms moving in our direction. So 85 today, 88 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll be watching for those storms to our north, see if they gather and work uh, towards us. 87 Friday. 88 Saturday, 88 Sunday, and a lot of people are asking about Memorial Day weekend. So far, Saturday and Sunday look dry. If we're looking long term, there may be a small chance of rain coming up on Memorial Day. As we get a little bit closer, we'll be able to get you a, a, a more reliable forecast there. But uh, we'll have updates throughout the week, especially on the KSAT weather app. Guys, thank you so much. LeBron season could come to an end tonight. Is that a PGA golfer who works in a pro shop? and teaches golf lessons, became a fan favorite at that PGA major tournament over the weekend. We'll show you why coming up. Hey, the Lakers are on the brink of falling off that cliff. Tonight, L.A. turned things around towards the end of the regular season, got into the play-in tournament, then entered the playoffs as the seventh seed. Didn't have much of a problem getting to the third round, but, oh, have they met their match with the Denver Nuggets. The number one seed in the West beat the Lakers 119-108 Saturday in L.A. Lakers are now one loss away from being swept in the Western Conference Finals. Denver just one win away from their first ever NBA Finals since joining the NBA from the ABA. Game three of the Eastern Conference Finals in Miami with the Heat already up 2-0 on the Celtics. Boston makes a game of it early. Jalen Brown, the baseline jumper. Celtics up 16-14. Led midway through the first quarter, but that was it. Celtics luck right out. Caleb Martin goes on a 5-0 run to give Miami a 30-22 lead after one. Second quarter, Gabe Vincent comes alive. Knocked down a three. He finished with 29. Team high. The Heat have relied on Jimmy Butler to close out games this series. And he wasn't needed in the crunch time last night. Miami wins it in a dominant fashion, 128 to 102, handing Boston their largest playoff defeat in franchise history. So here's an update on the conference finals in the East. The Heat are up 3-0. They can sweep on Tuesday, and the Nuggets can sweep the Lakers in game four tonight. That's at 7.30. All right. Take a look at this. Spur fans are ready to see the team hit the court with the top pick came demand for season tickets. The Spurs saw that rise almost right away. Saturday morning at the at and Center, fans who bought full season ticket plans or the 10-game package got to pick the seats in the select-the-seat event. They expected around 3,000 fans to attend. There's some happy faces in the crowd, that's for sure. Look at all those seats. They're going to be gone because this is going to be a great season. The Spurs will hold another one of these events this Thursday.
And the San Antonio Gunslingers swept their four-game road trip. They are now 5-0 and overall this season in the National Arena League. The only undefeated team left over the weekend. The Gunslingers won the first battle of Texas, winning at the West Texas Warbirds, 38-36. Four of their five wins have come by two points or less. Gunslingers are back home Sunday, May 28th, when they host the Jacksonville Sharks at 3 o'clock at the Freedom Coliseum. All right, now to a fairy tale ending at the PGA Championship, one of golf's major tournaments. Brooks Kepka won the title, but as ABC's Will Reeve tells us, it was a 46-year-old club pro who teaches golf lessons at a public course in California who stole the show. Brooks Kepka waking up the new PGA champion, winning his fifth major title and the first for any defector to the rival Saudi-backed Live Tour. <laughs> But all eyes on the unlikely hero he hugged as he walked off the course. That's 46-year-old Michael Block, a club pro whose mind-boggling slam dunk hole-in-one on the 15th hole. At the 15th. The fairy tale story. Was the exclamation point on a tournament for the ages. He still doesn't believe it. But on the fly. Block stunned, asking superstar Rory McIlroy if he really made the shot. No way. Rory, did it go in? It sure did. Dumped it. Fans at his hometown club in Mission Viejo, California, where he normally teaches lessons, erupting in cheers. Block's whole run was magical, right down to the moment he learned his final round playing partner would be McElroy. Are you serious? Wow. That should be fun. We're going to have a good time. He started Sunday tied for eighth place, then sank his final putt for par, finishing the tournament tied for 15th, which means he'll be back next year, automatically qualifying for the 2024 PGA Championship. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I'm living a dream. I'm making sure that I enjoy this moment. It was a dream come true right there. Once, not even in a lifetime, in a millennium. <laughs> he airmailed that thing right into the hole. Dunk. And then he had to ask Rory McIlroy if it went in. We'll go, yeah, it went in. <laughs> like, he thought it, it was like 10 feet from the hole or something. Crowd's going nuts. He thought, so did yeah, he I go back to teaching golf? Yeah, probably raise his rates. <laughs> I think it was like 150 bucks an hour. I bet it's more now. I bet it is. Do you have a doorbell cam? They're great for tracking deliveries, catching an unexpected guest, and in some cases, even criminals. It's why police departments across the country are now asking for access to yours. But what if you don't want to grant permission? Can they still see your recordings then? Today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris is going to explain your rights when it comes to the law and home surveillance. And it is a Foodie Monday on S. Oh, look at that. We've got some Chicago cuisine. Have you heard of Ruga? Is it Rugale? Rugala? Rugala. Rugalach. Is it Rugalach? I don't know. It just looks good. Whatever it is. You like just it. like food. Yeah, whatever. It looks good. All right. We are here, and they're also going to have a deal for free coffee. Free coffee. Don't want to miss it. You are looking at massive flames in Canada. This wildfire is raging in Alberta. That's in the western part of the country. Authorities hope cooler temperatures and showers forecast for the coming week will help firefighters battling those blazes. Although storms could complicate efforts, authorities have to do some close park or have to close some parks and campgrounds in Alberta. Canada's wildfires have since smoked the U.S., including Minnesota, Nebraska, Illinois, Wisconsin, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and Washington triggering air quality alerts in some places. A volcano in Mexico still spewing ash. Today, school once again canceled in areas near Popocatepetl. Some flights had to be canceled after a nearby airport shut down several hours this weekend due to all this ash. The volcano reportedly also sending tremors into nearby communities. More women are suing the state of Texas. They're asking a court to put an emergency block on the state's abortion law. The women are joining a lawsuit launched earlier this year by five other women in the state who are denied abortions despite pregnancies they say endanger their health or lives. It's why Lauren Miller joined the suit. Twelve weeks into her pregnancy, Miller learned one of the twins had a rare genetic condition and would likely not survive. 
It was clear I needed an abortion because every day going on, it was putting my health and our healthy twin at risk. More than a dozen Texas women in total have joined the Center for Reproductive Rights lawsuit against the state's law, which prohibit abortions unless a mother's life is at risk, an exception that is not clearly defined. The prevention of HPV may become half as complicated as it is now. Instead of a double dose of vaccine, researchers are now saying you need only one. Health leaders from nearly 100 countries are in Switzerland this week for the health organization 76 World Health Assembly. Much of the focus on vaccines and cervical cancer. At the event, World Health leaders said giving girls just one shot would provide enough protection against cervical cancer and other HPV conditions. WHO SCIENTISTS SAY THIS SINGLE DOSE APPROACH COULD BE A GAME CHANGER. THE ORGANIZATION'S GOAL IS TO HAVE 90% OF THE YOUNG GIRLS ACROSS THE GLOBE VACCINATED BY THE TIME THEY'RE 15. OUTSIDE WITH LIVE CAM, I WAS HAVING A DISCUSSION WITH MIKE AND JUSTIN EARLIER TODAY ABOUT HOW MANY TIMES WE'VE ALREADY HIT 100 LAST YEAR. BY THIS TIME, I THINK WE CAME UP WITH TWO OR THREE ALREADY. AND THIS YEAR, pfft, not even close. Well, doesn't the rain have something to do with that? It helps. It helps a lot. Last May was just brutally hot. We did not get a lot of rain. You know, temperatures were in the triple digits for several days, three days there in May of 2022. We haven't gotten near 100 yet this year, and that's a good thing. Uh, we have hit the 90s, but not triple digits. And the rain has been really, really nice. I want to show you a great picture. Speaking of really nice, down in Aransas Bay, uh, Aransas Pass Bay. That is gorgeous. Some beautiful colors. Water is just, uh, just so smooth. And if you're heading down to the coast uh, next couple of days, uh, maybe over the next week or so, the forecast is going to be pretty similar. We're looking at temperatures in the upper 80s. Uh, smooth waters, seas are not that high, winds will be generally pretty light. So this is good beach weather. Not a lot of rain in the forecast down there either. And water temperatures are now up above 80. Uh, so the, those beaches down there will start to get pretty busy here in the coming weeks. As you look at the case, that 12 hour forecast 83 at 3 o'clock, 85, 5 p.m., 83 at 7 p.m. We're down into the 70s tonight, a quiet day. But as we said earlier, there are some small chances for storms in our forecast. We'll lay out those chances and time them out if we can for you coming up here in just a bit, guys. All right, Justin, we'll look forward to that. Now to the war in Ukraine. President Biden met with Ukrainian President Zelensky at the G7 summit, promising more aid. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge reports this comes as Zelensky is denying Moscow's claim that a key city has fallen to the Russians. This morning, front lines shifting in eastern Ukraine. Russia advancing in Bakhmut, its troops raising their flag on a ruined rooftop, claiming full control of that city. Ukraine denying that, saying its forces fight on in one district and are advancing in areas nearby, now trying to break through Russian lines to the north and south of Bakhmut. Ukraine claiming this video shows a Ukrainian assault brigade storming Russian positions. Our team shown the remnants of that operation. These American-supplied armored personnel carriers were used in that Ukrainian assault near Bakhmut. That one suffered minor damage, but check out this one. It was hit by an anti-tank missile. Miraculously, the two crew inside survived. And ABC News taken inside this top-secret command center in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian soldiers monitoring live drone feeds down onto the battlefield. These drones are the view inside, in real time, of an active Ukrainian counteroffensive. Here we watch two Ukrainian soldiers with their guns raised, clearing a Russian position. The commander here saying Ukrainian forces are ready for a bigger counteroffensive at any time. And as new U.S. weaponry reaches the battlefield, President Biden putting his arm around Ukraine's President Zelensky at the G7 summit in Japan. The U.S. promising more ammo and weapons. We're going to continue to provide economic, humanitarian and security assistance to Ukraine so it can stand strong as long as it needs it. Well, a Ukrainian commander telling me new American weaponry is now filtering through that major Ukrainian offensive expected soon, possibly to the south, as the U.S. and allies now work to get F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. But it's unclear when they will arrive. Tom Sufi Burridge, ABC News, Slovyansk, Ukraine.